Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing something different than our build guides and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Segele Moonshot and my very first build on it. So, um, I did open up the box and take it out and, you know, take it apart just to see how it works. And I washed it off and cleaned it and everything. So, I mean, you should do that anyway whenever you get something new. So, it's not brand new in the package, but I, I've never built on it. So, in saying that, I, I'm not saying I'm an expert on building with this. So if I make a mistake or something, th this is literally the very first time that I've built on this. So I'm, I'm not going to do it perfectly. And, you know, after I get, you know, a dozen or a couple dozen builds on this, I'm going to do another video showing the things that I've learned and, and you know, maybe the best way to build on it for me. But that's not going to be in this video. This is just going to be my very first impression of it, what I think, and... and how I build on it for my very first time. So let's go on and jump into it and see what it looks like. So here's the package that it comes in. It's a, a metal tin. And, and I actually really like this package. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, most most packaging is like a, a plastic case like this. and it, Yeah, I, I like this package. It looks cool. I, I'm gonna keep this tin and use it to hold something or other. got kind of a retro 50s artwork looking, I don't know, kind of like Fallout or something like that. Okay, so we've got our authenticity stuff. Not really going to go into that. So when you open up the package, you've got the moonshot itself. And you've got an extra glass and just the usual bag of O-rings and that kind of stuff. And you have a bag of two Allen keys and some screws. And I'm actually going to take one of these Allen keys out because we're going to need it. They actually feel like they're different sizes. Yeah, these are different sizes, so I'm not sure what that's for yet, because I haven't used them, but we'll go on and take them both out, because I'm guessing we'll need them. Okay, so the tank itself, it's, it's pretty small. It's kind of a a compact little thing along the same lines as like a goblin mini. Uh, it's top fill and this unscrews really easily even though it's tiny and there's no knurling, there's no lip there really. But it unscrewed just fine. It, there's a little bit of moisture left over from when I washed it. It's got huge fill holes so that's not a problem. And you just unscrew it to take it apart. And it kind of comes off with this bottom chimney section attached to it. And you've got the top and the glass. I want to set all that aside. So there's our build deck. And if you're used to building it all, you, you'll know that that's kind of a unique build deck. I'm going to unscrew this chimney cap and take it out of there. thought I dried it off really well, but I guess I missed a couple spots. So here's our build deck. It comes completely out of there with the pin sticking out. That That's the pin that actually makes contact with um, with your mod. So I, when I first saw pictures of this online I, I was a little bit confused about how this works because you know on a normal mod this airflow would not be up in here and the coil would kinda sit right where that airflow is. 
but I think that they kind of want you to put the coil in like this and raise it up above to sit on top of the airflow. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm really not seeing where that second Allen key comes into play unless these two screws are sized differently. Well, they're the same. Yeah, I'm not sure what that second Allen key is for. I'll just be a mystery for now. I'm sure we can figure it out as we go along. So I'm guessing that as you build, you need to just hold on to this because, you know, normally you would have it sitting in the base and and do it that way, but it's, it's kind of blocked doing it this way. So I'm going to take it out and try and build it holding on to this center pen. So if you know me, you know my channel, you know that I kind of go for crazy, crazier builds. And so I'm not, I'm not going to do a boring build on this. I'm going to go straight for stainless steel vertebrae. When I first was getting into building, or it used to be when I got a tank, I would do a really boring, like just really super plain, ordinary build for my very first build on a tank, just to get a feel for it and learn how to use that tank, and then I would step it up. But I've done a lot of builds between now and then, so I'm just going to go straight for for what I want to ultimately be in there which is vertebrae. Grab the wrong one. Okay, I'm gonna go on and loosen up these screws. So, I guess technically this is a two post, but not like the two posts that we've been doing on the channel, like the Velocity or the Griffin. These are gonna have to share the, both of those holes. So the dual coils are gonna share each hole. So, kind of like a two-post and a three-post had a baby. They're going to have to share these holes. But those are nice and huge holes, so I don't think that'll be too big of a problem. So, I'm going to set this aside for now. Put it down in there so it doesn't roll away. And we are going to get to wrapping. From the look of it, I need to make the legs longer than I would typically do, so I'm going to make these legs nice and long, and I think I'll do um, eight wraps. So this is eight wraps contact on a three millimeter diameter. So this is currently the build that I have in my Griffin and it, it'll be a good Good comparison. Okay. So I'm going to start by getting the first coil in there, and what I'm going to do is just put the legs in and kind of scoot it up over the airflow, see if that works. Yeah, just kind of stuff it on top of there. And after I tighten them down, I'll try and clean it up and get it looking okay and 
all that kind of stuff. And I guess what I'm going to do is just kind of move these up out of the way. I don't want to trim those yet. And we'll put in our second one. So I'm going to try and go under the other ones. I'm just bending it up and out of the way so that it, it's not bothering this, this coil. This is a, a unique kind of build deck. I've never built on anything like this before. Not really a big fan of having to try and hold it and wrestle with it. I would rather it be on a base. So that that's ugly as can be. That might be too many wraps, but we're gonna we're gonna try it. Now I'm gonna tighten these down. It's kind of hard to tighten this without having something really to hold on to. Okay, I think I've got them nice and tight. I'm going to try and carefully trim these without cutting the other leg. Got them cut there now, I just want to change their placement and make them not so hideously ugly. Need to make sure they're right over that airflow, but not touching the airflow. This is not going to be the most beautiful build, I can already tell, so. Maybe I'll, my technique will be a little bit refined further down the road, but this, for my very first one, I'm, I'm okay with it not being pretty as long as it works. Every other device that I've built on on this channel, I've had at least you know, 30, 40, 50 builds on, on it before. So this is my very first time doing a, a totally new device for the first time on camera. I'm just trying to position them right if I can. Which is hard once again because I don't I'm just got this thing floating around in my hand. Okay. So I think we're ready to fire it. Uh-oh. Hopefully we won't have a short from it touching the sides there. Yep, we will. 
I need to clean these up a little bit. I'm just going to move these legs in a little bit so that they're not touching the chimney. Okay, so that's not really how I wanted it to be placed in there. I'm going to try and move it forward a little bit. This might be too many wraps. So another thing that seems to me to be really difficult is that I have to dry fire it with this chimney in the way. I don't really like that. Maybe it's something that I'll get used to. Okay, so we most certainly have a short. I'm going to try and squeeze these coils together and get rid of that contact. Oops. It could be that just this diameter is too too much for this tank. Well, it's fitting in there easier. There's little notches, I think, that help it to be lined up with where the wick goes. There we go. Maybe we got rid of our short this time. There we go. Much better. I'm going to give these screws one more tighten just to make sure. kind of hard to dry fire this with a big 
wall of metal right in your way. We're getting there at least. So like I talk about in my other videos, I'm waiting for, for it to cool down before I brush on it. it up just a little bit. Okay, that's looking all right. I, I know that the coils look absolutely horrible, but it's firing all right. You're never going to make it look beautiful on your very first build, so it's okay for it to look kind of messy. I'm happy with how that's firing. Yep, that looks good. I'm going to let it cool down. And then we're going to wick it. So I'm going to make a cut real quick, wait for it to cool down because I have to take it back apart again and right now it's really hot. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I just let it sit here and cool down. And now I'm going to take it apart again, hopefully for the final time. And we're going to wick it. And I can already kind of guess that, that wicking on this is going to be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to try just kind of sitting it in there while I'm getting the wick ready. I just kind of get a feeling that wicking on this is going to be one of the, the things that you could have issues with with this tank if you don't get it get those holes blocked all the way. It's advertised as being the easiest tank to wick and all that kind of stuff so I don't know about all that but we will see how it turns out okay holding it there is not gonna work this is kind of hard because I usually like to have my both my hands on the wick so I can be turning it as I'm pulling it. And that just doesn't really work if I also have to hold it. I think this tank is designed for people with three hands.
Okay, I'm just gonna kind of stop there. Cut off some of the excess. And we'll see what this looks like. I'm just cutting off all this extra that's hanging out the bottom here. I don't know that this is the best way to wick this. I'll have to experiment with different wicking techniques, but this is what I want to go with for my very first try. I'm going to try and kind of pack this down in there. have to get it out of there just a little bit to do that. Sorry about the focus. I'm I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. I didn't even look at the camera. Just kind of stuffing it back up in there. And there's a metal post right here, and I'm trying to get the cotton separated. I don't think I'd go so far as to say that this is the easiest tank to wick like they advertise. I would have already been done with the Griffin. Okay, that does look much better. So just from my kind of gut intuition, I think that leaking can be an issue with this tank if you don't have the cotton all the way pressed up against those holes. But it looks like I do. So I'm going to go on 
and throw it on there and give it a try. And we'll see how it turns out. I wasn't really happy with how much that I, I had to end up handling the wick. Normally I like to try and avoid touching it as much as possible, but the way that this worked, I kind of had to move it around with my fingers and just generally touch all over it because I had to hold the build deck while I was wicking it and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, maybe wearing gloves doing this would be the best way to handle that. And this is a Max VG juice. We'll see how it handles it. Okay, we're ready to put our top section on. sure it's screwed on there nice and tight and I'm going to close the airflow and fill it up. I like that it has nice big fill holes on it. Kind of looks like it has the same thing going on as the Griffin does. The the metal's real close to the glass, so little bubbles get trapped in there, especially if you're using Max VG. But that should equalize out a little bit once I open up the airflow. Okay, that's our first build. It's a pretty tank. I like the way that it looks. Sitting at .16, that's that's about what I expected. It was 1.5 when we were firing it. We have it juiced up, so it's going to be a little bit of fluctuation there. I'm going to take my first hit at 55. Coals are flooded right now, so no smoke. It's starting to pick up now. I'll turn it up to 62. It's a little warm, but I would expect that from something so small. I'm not a real huge fan of this drip tip on there. Like, I like the shape of it, you know, it feels good, but it's so short that my lips are kind of hitting up against this metal, and I really don't like that on other tanks. And on this one, it's like, I, I don't know, it just it feels a little weird. Maybe I'm just not used to it. More than enough airflow. I'm going to actually turn that on the air just a little bit. And you can see that it's wicking okay. Which is good news considering how thick this juice is. I was kind of afraid that it was going to 
burn me out on the hit. It's got, it's got good flavor. It's a little bit on the dry side, but I think that's probably going to come down to how how I wick it, and I'm not even going to pretend to say that what I just did was the best way to build it and wick it or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to make my final judgment on that until I've got you know at least 20 builds on this. It's a little much on the airflow, and if I turn it down, then it's a little too hot. The clouds are a little bit smaller than what the Griffin would do with the same wattage. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of having that turned down. That's a little hot. Um, you know, I, I, I expected it to be warm. This is really short and, you know, your lips are here and the coil is right there. So there's not a whole lot of room for it to cool down. I'll give it a couple more tries and we'll wrap this up. It doesn't feel at all like it's about to dry hit on me. It definitely not a dry hit, and it doesn't feel like it's headed in that direction. So it's keeping up with me pretty well. Just first impressions. I, I think it's a good combination with with the stainless steel vertebrate in there. I'm happy with it. I'm going to keep using it and hopefully give you a little bit of updated impressions down the road. But it, it performs about how I expected it to for the height and the size and everything. And I'm really happy that it didn't give me any, any dry hits considering how kind of funky that wicking was. So I, that, that came out better than I thought it would for my very first build, especially being on camera it's harder to build on camera so I'm happy with that I know it wasn't the prettiest build but kind of experienced my first build along with me so hopefully you got kind of an idea of how to build on this if you have any questions or comments I'd love to hear them and I'm I'm going to keep on building on this and keep working on it try different things and see what I like the best in this for right now, I'm probably going to leave this build on for a couple days and really put it through its paces, see how long the wicks last, and, and all the kind of stuff that I do with the brand new tank. But if you like this, or you have some recommendations for what you'd like to see on this channel, give us a like and subscribe to our channel, and just send me a message through the comments or email.